Aloha! This is Excel video tutorial on the ferret out spreadsheet errors. Use Excel tool to uncover and correct formula problems. Written by Mark G. Simkin. Issued in February 2004. Published in the Journal of Accountancy. This is Shinpei Yamashita and Logan Bowles. We are the students of the Brigham Young University, Hawaii. In this video, we in this video we are going to learn uh, how to build the audit audit module and how to use automated auditing uh, tools. Okay, and we're going to learn following the formulas, and we're going to learn about this uh, built-in tools in Excel. Okay, so to start off. We're going to show you how to use the count and the count if functions. Um, so here in the example that was uh, presented in the article, um, down here the audit module is supposed to have uh, formulas in it that will help you to um, make sure if there are any errors in the information um, in the company's payroll uh, up here in the top part, then it'll show up down below. So in order to get a count of how many <coughs> people they have on the payroll, we're going to use the count function. And so the count function is equal uh, count, and then we go ahead and we need our range. Um, and then you can go ahead and close that, and it'll show us how many people are on our payroll. And what it actually is, is doing is any um, cell that has a number in it, um, it will add up and it will show the total number down in the count uh, with the count function. Um, whereas if we use the count if function, um, we'll go ahead and count if, <coughs> and then we're going to use the uh, same kind of thing. We need our range, but then with the count if, we use a criteria. And so in this case, we're going to go ahead and put if it's greater than zero we want to go ahead and have it count those all up so that we can know how many people we have who are working overtime. So here we can see that we have five people working overtime um, and that's just at a quick glance. So that's what the count and count if functions do. Okay and then with the, the max uh, formula we're going to go ahead and see um, which uh, person in the uh, payroll has the highest uh, number, say for pay rate, regular hours, overtime hours, and then total regular pay. So let's say we want um, our maximum for allowed pay rate to be $14 an hour. Um, for regular hours, we don't want anybody working more than 40 hours. Um, and then for overtime hours, we don't want anybody working more than 10. And the maximum allowed regular pay rate we're going to have is $560. Um, <clears throat> so now what we need to do for our max is we can go ahead and put equals max. And then we just put in our um, numbers that we want it to look at. And then it will give us the highest um, pay rate, which is Baker. Uh, and then we can go ahead and just drag and drop. And it puts in, oh, maybe it doesn't. Maybe we'll have to do it uh, individually. We can put in the max in the same same way and um, use the max formula. Then go ahead and close it. And it'll give us, oh, maybe that was right. There is somebody working 40 hours. Um, and then for the other ones, same thing. And 9 is our highest. And then for the regular pay, we get 502. Okay, and then one more if-then statement we're going to show you. Um, we'll use down to see if the values that we have in our maximums that we found are acceptable or not. So we're going to go ahead and use um, the if-then statement again. So if uh, P24 is uh, less than or equal to, uh, B23, then we're going to have it tell us yes. Um, otherwise, that's what this column means, otherwise we're going to have it say no. OK, 
and we'll close our parentheses, and we should be able to use this same formula for all of our uh, cells. And if you look in all of them, it has the same formula, which is correct. So that's how um, we do our if-then statements, our max, and also our count if and our count. And now Shinpei will show you how to do um, the data validation. Okay, I'm going to teach you about automated auditing. And I'm going to introduce you some of the built-in function that helps you to find errors on spreadsheet such as data validation and trace the precedence and trace dependence. First, I'm going to uh, teach you about data validation. Okay. The Excel, uh, okay. Excel enables you to create automated validation tests, okay, making it possible to reject data errors before actually they are entered in a spreadsheet. I'm going to show you what is it. For example, if I type, it, type in the data that is not valid, okay, the error message appears and Excel doesn't allow me to type in the data. Okay, I'm going to show you how to create that data validation. First, select the range that you want to create the data validation and under, under the data ribbon, Go to data validation and click the data validation. And the box appears. And for this purpose, I'm gonna choose decimal. Okay, number that type in the cell have to be between 6, 75, and 14. Okay. And if data is out, are not between 675 and 14, the error message appears and that says pay rate data to error. Sorry. So that pay rate must be Sorry, many type miss must be at, at least six seventy five and no more than forty nine. And if I type in the bed, the value that is not valid, okay, the error message appears. And however, there might be. Uh, there is a possibility that there is a mistake or the invalid data is, is typed in even before you create the data validation. Okay. However, once you have created this uh, data validation rule, there are still other ways to spot the mistake. Okay. Okay, go to data ribbon and under the data validation, uh, click circle invalid da data. Oh, sorry. Okay, again, data validation and circle invalid data. And Excel circle the value that is not valid and it helps you to find invalid the data. E if you want to erase the circle, you also can go to data validation and clear valid validation circle. The next is a data precedent. Okay. Data precedent, you can find the data precedent under the formula tab and formula auditing. And here is a pre trace precedence and trace dependent. Okay, if I select the D14 and click trace dependent, and blue arrow appears, and that shows you that. Uh, the uh, number in the G14 is computed by using the value in the G4, G5 to G12. Okay. And then what happens if I click trace precedence one more time and again? And the 
this blue arrow, arrow shows the precedent relationship for entire range of cells. <coughs> And this blue arrow shows you the precedent relationship. Okay, for example, I'm, let me remove all the arrows and click trace precedent. And regular pay. This amount is computed by using the, this pay rate and regular hour. Okay, then arrow and dot shows you th that precedent relationship. Okay, let me do this again. Then also the absence in the dot and arrow shows you uh, or alert you there might be some uh, the error in on the cells. For example, another cell in the uh, column F use formula. Okay. However, okay, the cell uh, the cell F7 doesn't have any arrow and also D7 has not dot. So it's because the number in the F7 is hard coded. It doesn't use formula like another cell. Okay. This is another way to detect errors. And data pre dependent, the same as data precedence, and but uh, this one shows you dependence relationship. And uh, blue, blue arrow. Uh, blue arrow and the dot shows you that relationship in the back corners. It means okay, this amount in the G20 is computed using uh, taking this number and also this number. Okay, okay these are uh, data validation and trace dependence and trace precedence. As you can see, uh, Spreadsheet has many uh, built-in tools that help you to uh, find and correct the uh, errors. Okay. okay, so in conclusion, um, we've showed you how to use um, if statements, uh, count if, and count. Also how to use the max statements, or max formula. Um, and also the uh, data validation using the tracing of dependence and tracing of precedence, and also um, how to use, how to use data validation. So we hope you enjoy um, and are able to use this in the future. Um, aloha.